my friends, how are you doing? Welcome back. So yesterday, I walked you through the seven benefits of launching a video podcast. And out of the seven, I talked about three of them. Today, we're going to talk about the rest, the other four. Uh, but let me just summarize real quick what they are. The very first one was that allows you to find your voice and share your message. And the reason for that is because once you make the decision that you want to have a video podcast, you really put your mindset onto work thinking about what is the topic that you want to share and what is it exactly that you want to communicate to your ideal avatar. So that is the number one. The number two is it allows you to broaden your reach. And what we discussed yesterday is that if you decide just to do podcasts, you're only sharing that within the platforms that allow you to share audio content. And by adding video to your podcast, literally you're adding another vehicle that allows you to take that content and share it across more platforms. So it allows you to broaden that reach and get your content across to be seen by more eyes, which is great. Now, number three was that um, it also allows you to meet your ideal avatar where they are at. And what we talked about is that not everybody likes to consume content the same way. Some people like reading, some people like audio, some people like viewing. So by doing both video and podcast, basically you are reaching all these different audiences, your ideal avatar, where they are at, okay? So those were the first three that we talked about yesterday. Now, number four is that allows you to create predictable content. And the reason being is, again, because you're already on that mindset that you're going to be creating content, you actually create a plan. And that is what you should be doing anyways. You should have a content calendar that allows you to think ahead of time what kind of content you want to create, if you need to do the research to make sure that your headers and your titles and your captions become searchable. So all that is the homework that you kind of do to organize your content and create predictable content, okay? So you're no longer being reactive, but you're being proactive. Now, the other thing is, and this is number five, that allows you to create repeatable content. Um, and why is it repeatable? Basically, because you start batching, okay? And this is a secret word, and a lot of entrepreneurs are actually not taking advantage of this. And basically what you do, you determine, okay, now that you know what kind of content you need to create and the amount of content that you need to create and the frequency or the cadence, you literally create a process that becomes repeatable, like batching, so that way you're not creating content every day. The idea is to narrow it down and be as effective and efficient when you're creating your content so you're not running around like a chicken with your head cut off, okay? Um, so basically that is what you're doing and then with the batching, and I give this example a lot, it's like, I don't do my hair every day, I don't do my makeup every day, I don't, but when I decide that I want to shoot for my video podcast, which is once a month, I actually get dressed, get all ready, and then I schedule it for one day and I shoot five video podcasts, okay? So I give you my secret there. So that is for re uh, repeatable. Now, number six is that is reusable. Why is that? Well, all this content becomes extremely reusable for you because instead of sitting down once and then um, just posting it one time in one of the platforms, the other secret is that you actually can take this content and slice it and dice it to use it in many different ways, as many as you want, to get it across all the different social media platforms. And the way you do that is, um, so you sit down, you, you record your video podcast, and then you take a 60 second video for your feed. You take a 15 second video for your stories on Instagram. Then that same one, you can actually push it to Facebook. And those are short or micro content. Uh, and then you take the macro content, which is a longer version of it, and then you post it onto YouTube and then to your website. So as you can see, you can reuse all this content as much as you want, and then you can also um, transcribe it. You know, use a service like rev.com and transcribe it, and that can turn into a blog post. So for the people that like then reading, you, you got that option as well. 
So in the last one, number seven is the benefit of it is that it actually allows you to scale the process. So you can do it over and over again, and most importantly, you can commit to it. Because once you're committed, then you know for sure that you're gonna be able to do it over and over again in a consistent basis so you can show up for your audience also in a consistent basis. So it becomes extremely scalable because you can repeat and repeat and do it again and again and keep producing content so you become a content machine, if you will. All right, my friends, so hopefully that was helpful. We went through the seven benefits of creating a video podcast. I hope you like that. If you have any questions, shoot me a DM or leave a comment below. I check all my comments. See you soon. <music>